Happy Thursday, 2027. Today is Thursday, April 30th. It's the last day of April. The last day of the greatest month of the year. What are we going to do after this? I don't know, I guess we have May. Ugh. May. In case you haven't noticed, I've kind of assembled this uh, Avengers team, you might sort of call it. It's called, call it the Marist Avengers. I got Jernell Richardson, Danae Mays, Mari Owen, Cesario Wyatt. Zakia Grady, Amari Canada, we got the greatest Avengers group in the world because they keep doing their work. All these people keep saying, I don't know where to find my work. Where's my classwork? Well, they don't need to know where. They know where the classwork is, and they are on top of it. They're doing their job, and I'm super proud of them. That's why they're my Marist Avengers. If we ever win a homeroom challenge, oh, gosh, please, I hope Essence doesn't keep winning. If we ever win a homeroom challenge, I will uh, I'm gonna try to cover this light with my big head. If we ever win a homeroom challenge, it's because of those six. Those six superheroes that I got in there is making sure they get all their work done. They've also been texting their friends, telling their friends to do their work. Because doing your work is cool. Guys, I don't know what to do with this light. I'll just hold a pillow above it the whole time. I'll do all this with a pillow above my head. How about that? I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you so we can get started on today's work. One more day of texts before tomorrow, and tomorrow is going to be a discussion day. Oh no, the pillow didn't work. I think I can balance this pillow right here the whole time. I'll just, that'll be a nice little headrest for me. I'm gonna balance this pillow the entire time so that light is not in our faces. Your text should be right here. It says, lesson 5.4, Thursday, April 30th. Why did Doug's father make this joke? Well, because he's a dad. And that's what dads do. No, just kidding. Doug was five years old and just learning to ride his bike. Ooh, this seems really cool. I'm going to read it straight through, and I'm going to realize that Doug's dad made this joke because he wanted to make him laugh and feel better. That's why Doug's dad made this joke. It's like the appropriate genre of this passage. The appropriate genre of this passage is historical fiction. Why is it historical fiction? Because it's fake, it's made up, and it takes place during World War II, which is an actual event that takes place in history. So we call it historical fiction. Excellent, and you're gonna move on. And we've got source G right here. I gave you a hint about the gist. The topic is farmers. So you need to go ahead and double check what your gist is. It should be about farmers. If you are stuck, remember I said these are a little bit more difficult than normal. You're gonna to listen to this video one more time so that you can hear me read it and you can understand it or you can read it to yourself, or you can have an adult read it to you. It doesn't matter as long as you reread it to make sure you understand it. Document seven. Suddenly, the papers were filled with accounts of highway picketing by farmers in, C in Sioux City. S excuse me, by farmers around Sioux City. A farmer's holiday association had been organized by one Milo Reno, and the farmers were to refuse to bring food to market for 30 days or until the cost of production had been obtained. The strike, ooh, a strike, we've heard about strikes before. The strike around Sioux City soon ceased to be a local matter. It jumped the Missouri River and crossed the Big Sioux. Roads were picketed in South Dakota and Nebraska, as well as in Iowa. Soon Minnesota followed suit and her farmers picketed her roads. North Dakota organized down in Georgia, farmers dumped milk on the highway. For a few days, the milk supply of New York City was menaced. Farmers in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, organized and potato farmers in Long Island raised the price of potatoes by a holiday. This banding together of farmers for mutual protection is going on everywhere. But the center of this disturbance is still Iowa and the neighboring states. The Milk Producers Association joined forces with the farmer's holiday. All the roads leading to Sioux City were picketed. Trucks by hundreds were turned back. Farmers by hundreds lined the roads. They blockaded the roads with spiked telegraph poles and logs. They took away a sheriff's badge and his gun and threw them into a cornfield. Gallons of milk ran down roadway ditches. Gallons of compensated milk were distributed free on the streets of Sioux City. Go ahead and tell me what those farmers were doing and why. 
based on this document, state two actions taken by farmers to deal with their economic situation during the Great Depression. So you should look at two actions, two things that the farmers did to deal with their economic situation. How many? Two, 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 two. Write them both here. One thing the farmers did was, a second thing the farmers did was, good, next source, source H. Ready just for the section below, the gist is young people. So we just talked about farmers. Now we're gonna talk about young people. Lorena Hickok, a former Associated Press reporter, was hired by Harry Hopkins, head of the Federal Emergency Relief Administration, to travel throughout the United States and send Hopkins private reports on the state of the nation and effects of the New Deal programs. This is an excerpt from one of these reports dated January 1st, 1935. Only among the young is there evidence of revolt, apparently. These young people are growing restive or restless. Out of some 15 weekly reports from industrial centers all over the country, hardly one omitted a paragraph pointing out that these young people may not tolerate much longer a condition that prevents them from starting normal, active, self-respecting lives, that will not let them marry and raise families, that condemns them to idleness and want. At present, there is no leadership among them. College men are shoveling sand, checking freight cars, working in filling stations. High school graduates are offering themselves to industry for nothing, just experience, and are being accepted. Boys who normally would be apprentices in the trades are wandering the pavements, riding the freights back and forth across the country, hanging about on street corners. One day in November, a 21-year-old boy in Baltimore walked 20 miles looking for work. I stopped at every place, he said, but mostly they wouldn't even talk to me. This is going to where you're going. This is going to be what your gist is going to be about. The hint is that the topic is young people, so you have your who, you need your what, where, when, or why. Those all need to be in your gist. And you're going to move on and answer this question based on this document. State one way the Great Depression affected young people. This document gives you many examples of how the Great Depression affected young people back then. You need to give me one example of how it impacted them. One example of how the Great Depression impacted young people was the Great Depression impacted young people because that's how your answer should sound. Next question, did you log in Alexia for 20 minutes? If you didn't and your answer is no, you should go back onto Alexia right after you click submit and you should be done with Lexia. You should have 20 minutes every single day, which will get you done with Lexia by the end of this school year. Last thing you need to make sure you do, it says, congratulations, you've completed today's classwork. You need to click the submit button, which is down here. It's not on my screen, but it's on yours. Then you can click turn in on Google Classroom. Do not turn this assignment in on Google Classroom first. Make sure you click submit on this page first and then turn it in. Hope you guys have a great Thursday. I'll see you tomorrow for Friday.